Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we're going to do uh, go back and do some PF Sense stuff. So um, we're actually going to work <coughs> and configure our NAT, which is Network Address Translation, to allow um, my home network to be able to hit the internal network on um, essentially one of uh, an S, uh, Bastion box, which I, it's just a Linux box that essentially will use to be like an entry point to um, <clears throat> the network. Um, so this is kind of like the same thing of like if you were to open up on like your router or your firewall, open up like <clears throat> for Minecraft, for example, port like 25565 two, from the world into your, your home network to hit your Minecraft server for pe other people, like your friends or whatnot, to allow in, this is how you would do it. Um, but <clears throat> in this case, everything is within my home network, so I'm not actually opening anything up to the world. So full disclaimer, if you do decide to open something up to the world, you gotta be aware of some security risks and concerns just in case you know someone actually hacks you because you're actually opening up something on your internal network to be publicly accessible. Um, so if you I'm not entirely sure what you're getting yourself into. You probably shouldn't do it. Um, and this video is more for educational purposes only than at that point. But if you know what you're doing, but you just don't know how to do it in PF sense, keep watching the video and have fun. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you like the video, please give me a uh, an email if you want to sponsor me or send me some free swag. So my email is in the description below. All right, let's get started, guys. <clears throat> okay, so now we will log into our PFSense box. So I actually have my other Windows server within my V from my vCenter logged in um, to the web GUI because this is gonna be the easiest way to do it. We will go to firewall NAT. So this is your, where your network translation stuff will take place. You can do port forwarding, one-to-one. -one. In this case, we're gonna focus on port forwarding. The reason for this is because it makes it easy to be like, hey, if someone hits me on a certain port, it will redirect to this server on, on this port. Um, this makes it very simple to kind of just, you know, translate and just be like, hey, this is, this is what it looks like publicly, essentially. So what we will do is, uh, first I'll show you actually on my actual machine, not my, not my uh, machine that's internally, this would be like your public facing machine in this case, um, where if I were to try to log in, and we're just gonna do port 22 in this case um, to it, it will essentially hang, right? So trying to SSH in, not working because it's not open on the firewall. So what we'll do now is actually add a new rule. So we'll leave it on the WAN interface because that's where it's going to be hitting from. You could set a source. In this case, we're gonna leave it as any, but the source is essentially like, hey, if you know where your traffic is coming from, you can specify the source, or in this case, what people would say is whitelist, where it's like, hey, if you're coming from this IP, we allow you to come in. But if it's any other ones, you're, you're not good to go. So this is a good way to kind of help strengthen your security so that you don't just pub make it publicly accessible to everyone. Just publicly accessible to like your friends that want to connect to your Minecraft server or your friends to, you know, SSH into your machine to do something on your Linux box, right? But in this case, because it's all internal, we're gonna keep it as any, no need to worry there. And then destination is essentially the WAN address, what the firewall public IP address is. Um, in this case, we're gonna do port 22, which is SSH. You can also do drop down and select SSH. I'm just gonna do 22. It will automatically know that port 22 is SSH by default, so it will actually change it when, when we get there. Then we will enter the host that we want to connect to. It to connect to. So when, when anyone hits this destination address, which is our public IP, what would it hit internally? In this case, we're gonna do one seventy two sixteen one dot ten, which is my Linux Bastion box um, to just be able to SSH into the network and then jump anywhere from there. Bastion is just more of a, a kind of technical jargon for like a jump host or something to get into a network, and then that that machine has access to everything else on the network uh, because you don't want everything on your network to be publicly accessible, right? And then we'll redirect it to port twenty two. Uh, and then from here, we got some uh, filter rule associations. So in this case, we our rule association, it's just passing. So anything that hits will just pass through essentially. So we hit save now and then hit apply. The It should reload very quickly actually. Um, you can kind of see here that it finished in like seconds. Um, so now we have our firewall NAT and you can see it's passing on the WAN interface, anything connecting to the WAN address, anything with the wildcard obviously, so any source or destination, we'll hit our NAT um, and NAT it to our Bastion box. So now if I were to minimize this on your current machine, 
in this case, and, or this would be like a publicly accessible machine outside of your network, um, you could now SSH to it, get the prompt, and now I am officially connected to that Bastion network. So, you know, I can actually ping our other server, uh, which was 172.16.1.5, I think. Was it five? I don't know if that was five. <laughs> this, this, this box. Hmm. Maybe it was five, actually. Properties. Yeah, 1.5. I don't know if I can actually ping it because it's a Windows box. It might not be, like, showing publicly on that network. But, essentially, now, now I'm on the network, so I can SSH or do whatever I need on that network and connect to any other box that is connectable from this box on the network. So that's essentially how you use NAT and how you can open up a server to be public accessible. Um, and as I said at the beginning of this video, this is more for educational purposes. If you do not know the security concerns in regards to making a service publicly accessible, um, but if you want to make your Minecraft server accessible, this is how you would do it. Just be careful that if you don't whitelist or specify source address, you essentially allow anyone able to access your network. So be careful with that, but hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and learn something new. So if you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.